Hello everyone, this is Ethan Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, like I mentioned in the previous Ether Raids offense video, we did just Garbo on offense this week. Plenty of things to talk about, but the notable stuff was, of course, bonus Niffle and bonus Claude. And uh, I guess bonus Triandra, because that meant people could run an extra Dancer and also have a bonus unit. So, yeah, that kind of... or a uh, bonus mythic on defense to lose even less lift. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about some of the shenanigans that went on. So, you know, this week on defense is about what you would expect this defense to do. <laughs> uh, nothing mind-blowing. But, uh, this week on offense, the number one problems, of course, were being unable to tank and being unable to kill literally everything I expected. So the biggest things I was expecting was Niffle and Legendary Quad bonus because it is Earth Season to be extremely annoying. And that was definitely true. Legendary Clods on defense were having over 70 HP. And I faced a few plus 10 ones <laughs> uh, with like turn one teams where not it's not really feasible to wait out for bolt tower damage for convenience in a lot of cases so a fallen star is just an absolute nightmare because 70 hp is 70 or 70 plus hp and the thing was the the best legendary claw out of them all maxed out at 81 speed and fewer maxes out at 76 speed because I, I haven't given her the rest of her flowers yet, so it didn't matter in that particular instance. Um, that particular match against that legendary Claude, I just decided to not pay attention <laughs> correctly, and uh, we just we just goofballed and screwed up predicting the AI, so we just paid the price, but it wasn't going to be a good match regardless for us because of uh, this legendary Claude being able to face tank stuff, because he also had 40s, 50s in defense, and res-ish so definitely a problem for my team when Fallen Star is in the question but uh, for sure this week, Null C Disrupt was so solid this week. I don't know why I'm saying this week so much, but lots of wind sweep, no counterattacks like Flash Plus or Lara Shell of Staff of Roust, and so much, so, so much no counterattack shenanigans this week. So, Null C Disrupt was definitely a good choice. I think the not so good choice, I knew it wasn't a good choice, but I just did it anyways just to try it out, was Soul on Fiorm. Just because most of the teams where Soul got to proc, we didn't need the healing at all. And where when we needed the healing, there was just Fatal Smoke to say hi, so <laughs> not very much a good healing there. But uh, the other other bonus unit Niffle was absolutely cancer for our team because she's just absolutely blazing fast with ARD attack speed 4, low attack speed, of course her weapon debuffs the enemy's stats by a 5. <laughs> so just absolutely blazing fast. Of course Fiorm had a solid res stat so tanking Niffle is feasible. The problem is we just can't couldn't ever kill her <laughs> because of domain of ice as a bonus unit she just has ridiculous amount of hp i saw 60s and i think i saw one of them as close to 70 hp as bonus so an absolute nightmare for us when she has domain of ice for the 30 percent damage reduction on the first attack of every combat yeah that's that's a bit much uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all we need to say there um bit unfortunate faced a lot of niffles this week some teams we could deal with other teams niffle was too oppressive i actually goofballed a match early on in the season because i uh just 
through. <laughs> so there is this. I'll, I'll talk about it in the next replay. So there is this team with lots of no counterattack. There was like a fire sweep bow, poison strike, brave Lynn. It was brave Veronica, of course. I think she. I, she was either running flash plus or leaf scalp. I don't remember. Probably leaf scalp. I don't know. There's multiple matches with Brave Veronica's. Uh, what else was there? There's Triandra, I believe. Niffle. I'm kind of blanking on who there was. But I, I think there was also Lara Shell as well. Uh, there, was an, there was another unit. There was Yoon, I believe. Moral of the story. Uh, lots of no counterattacks. Null C disrupt was solid there. Problem was, I just goofballed and did not process in my brain. Oh, there's Duo Sigurd as well. Uh, did not process in my brain that a lot of the units had rallies, and I calced everything out, and Fionn was like face tanking everything. So the problem was, of course, that they're not going to attack and get murdered, they're going to rally. And so I screwed up <laughs> my setup against the team. And, uh, which definitely is not a good thing to do. <laughs> so, to try and recover from that, my plan was to use Caden to bait out the Triandra and bait out some of the other units so we could steamroll from there and win. It was definitely going to be a win if we... if, if it worked out correctly. But the problem was, I processed my brain. Brave Veronica had Restore. So she was going to use Wind Fire Balm Plus. But what didn't register to me was that Wind Fire Balm Plus buffs all her allies by plus six attack and speed. So that meant the Triandra I calc to be too slow to double Caden was now fast enough to double Caden and well we'll talk about what happened in the next replay. <laughs> so yeah, because of that oversight, uh <laughs> uh Caden got murdered. As ex as I calced out, but I was assuming I expected him to not get doubled, but he got doubled. Probably should not be running HP plus five on him anymore because honestly, most of the time it doesn't matter nowadays. His main issue is just not a bulk in terms of speed and uh, speed. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Getting one shot is less of a concern for uh, my Caden, but because of that. Q arm lost, of course, tons of stats. That's losing plus nine, I believe, attack and speed, plus six defense, and plus seven res, something of that nature, which is uh, quite a bit. So it happened to be a bit rigged in that Few arm barely got murdered by all the enemy units I ha was having her bait. So that was not fantastic. And we ended up losing that match just because we could not. We just could not kill. <laughs> could not kill the threats that we needed to kill in time. And so that was just ripped. But yeah, honestly, this week, there was also a team with Niffle and some other units that we could deal with. But let's move on to the next replay and I'll talk about that match. It was uh, had a fall on Edelgard, so we get to talk about that, I guess. So... It was a team with Niffle and, uh, and, comp and some company. I believe there was a Knot and some other annoying threats. But the main thing that I saw was that there was a corner Fallen Edelgard with Defense Res Solo 4 and Defense Res Solo 3 with Attack Defense Menace. And so the problem was I was running the Calcs and I saw that for one, there was no way I could get the Fallen Edelgard to be in range of Bolt Tower because there was a he she was chilling on, I don't think it was this map, but she was chilling on where Sylvie is. There was a healing tower next to her, and of course she was running attack defense menace. So even if we baited turn one, we couldn't break the healing tower for her to move towards Bolt Tower range. And even if we baited turn one, she would hit, she was in the uh, seventh slot, so she would hit end turn and wouldn't get danced. So 
Turn two, she would move one space down and would not be in range of Bolt Tower. So I saw that we, she wasn't going to be in range of Bolt Tower and uh, we just could not dish out any real damage against her. I ended up just getting steamrolled by, I think, missing the kill on Niffle, and there was an Eldigan, Dancer Eldigan with Wings of Mercy, who danced uh, Niffle and took out my Peony, who I tucked in the corner because I was like, it doesn't really matter at this point because this match is lost, since no one can dish enough damage to fall on Edelgard. It, it was it was also an issue, of course, she was running Bonfire, so with the amount of defense she was getting with Attack Defense Menace and Defense Res Solo 7, if you want to call it that, it was just too much damage. We just would not be able to dish out enough damage in time. So that was just an L. <laughs> uh, there was another team where there was a Miracle Fallen Eagle Guard, of course, it doesn't work perfectly because she can't auto, always auto charge Miracle, and she doesn't always get her special fight effect when she's too low on HP. So I just kept attacking her until she died. <laughs> Pretty much it, because when you're running Miracle, you have no damage output. <laughs> uh, you have no specials, so no damage specials at least. So that was okay. There was another team that was like potato bowl stall. Uh, that was very close, <laughs> very close, I uh, barely dished out enough damage to win that run, but it was, I say barely, but the margins were large enough to where it's not like having more merges or something would have changed the outcome of the match, but, uh, yeah, that, the no few arm basically just epitomize how neutralizing penalties is insane in ether raids as a tank. And how you need to be able to dish out tons of damage, and you need to be able to heal. And Fuam couldn't really do any of those things against the tough teams. Not gonna lie, kinda forgot if I've been uh, actually showing all the merges and stuff on the units. Hopefully I have, because I'm a little going to be a little too busy to re-record this. It's kind of early in the morning so person has a safety fence on their side and they decide to go someone finally did this I was waiting <laughs> for the longest time for someone to do this I literally intentionally put this flag here and it has it has a technical purpose if you think about it to make it harder for someone to snipe down the catapult turn one but that's not really my concern of course, Bolt Tower would help out a lot against my defense. If you can chip down, especially units like Krom or Selif down to low HP, you can just take them out. But this spot is literally just plop your range tank here, and all my other units, melee units, can't reach. That's it's literally... <laughs> I, I don't know why it took so long for someone to do this, but uh, finally someone did it. Finally, <laughs> there are so many things wrong with this defense. It's it's uh, and it's not like Raven tomes are rare. It's just more of um, the Brahmins running sturdy impacts. So it might be harder one round KO, but it's, it's not like you need to one round KO. You pretty much just need the two shot Brahmin, and with his HP stat, and if you're using like a Raven tome, you should be able to pick up. A two shot unless you sabotage yourself against sun panic or something really hard but yeah literally all my structures are just blockades <laughs> just in the way and the dancers get left behind and so that means you can <laughs> bait the other way which is what they do just super solid there and Surprisingly, Fiorm can't actually double Sylvia, so, you know, if we actually had Wings of Mercy, that would have been costly. I take my stand here. But, uh, Bramamon here is not going to be able to take out Fiorm because the uh, Ice Mirror too strong. And Bramamon's gonna get blown out the window. But yeah, 
If you have Wings of Mercy there, like on Chrom or something, would have been not so great for them, but we don't, so rip us. So they're just able to bait out, and of course, Cecilia with Triangle Adept on Tome of Order against a Deadeye Legendary Chrom. Yeah, that's not gonna be great scaling for Chrom. <laughs> not, not very good scaling. You know, at least he does 13 damage, but. He actually straight up almost survives Cecilia, that is heavily thanks to Grand Greek Thermal Attack Defense, of course. Actually, do I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I have Lull Attack Defense on this set. And, yeah, it's not like Self can do anything against Fiorm, really. Never really is going to have a one round, one round KO. So there's that, and of course they have Duo Makai as well for dominance, so... It, it's just easy cleanup at this point. It's more of getting the last ether structure, which Solf is running all the way around. Which again, it's, it's one thing you can totally do against this defense. If you're able to bait that one Bramamon on the left side, you can probably full sweep with good execution and the right units because you can't necessarily just go in with any units and expect to win but uh just gonna hit and turn with few arm here and yeah cell is of course going to do zero times two in cell of fashion and because few arm has some guard shenanigans cell can't even proc his ignis so they're just going to take out cell of with Duo Makaya for flex value. Honestly, probably to farm SP, let's be real. No, <laughs> guess not. Now, of course, this is only one season of Ether Raids, but I figured would briefly mention uh, the comparison between using Nino as my carry and Fiorm as my carry. Of course, with Fiorm as my carry, the number one problem is Fiorm's not a ranged unit. So I don't have the option, like, Nino to go player phase some enemy unit conveniently, especially when you're doing the don't activate traps challenge, and lots of people put their, uh, all their traps on in melee range spots. <laughs> so, yeah, Fiorm's never going to get to player phase anyone, which means you have to hit and turn against everything, and that is a terrible idea. I can use Fiorn to beat my own defense, but it does require that we actually uh, think a little bit. <laughs> Can't just toss her in, max buffed, and hit end turn, because Chrom's and company just do too much damage with Luna. Chrom uh, just does a lot of damage with Deadeye. And Ren Greether and Lull Attack Defense, all that stuff coming into play, but... Yeah, don't. There were some matches where Nino would have done much better, but there were a good chunk of matches this season where Nino would have definitely done worse, or it would have just been a straight up loss because we can't dish out enough damage. Heck, like even the last match of the season against that infantry pulse team, I don't know if Nino could ever win that one consistently. It would heavily rely on being able to get into vantage range. And then somehow dealing with the uh, Festival Makaya, she would be the largest threat here. Besides Alt there, besides Altina, um, and Bramamon, of course. Bramamon's always a problem for Nino. <laughs> but even like Bramamon against uh, Fiorm, surprisingly uh, not great for Fiorm. Because of course, Impenetrable Dark is a huge issue when you're trying to stack res quite a quite a large issue because uh, well let's just say oh, excuse me man it's, it's actually kind of late but uh what was i saying I'm trying to think what was i saying no idea <laughs> 10 out of 10 um huh. what was i saying don't know now. Right, comparing Nino and Fiorm. So... 
Yeah, Fiora not being able to play her phase was a huge problem, but oh yeah, Bramon against Fiorm. Mostly just because Bramon is impenetrable dark. Like my Fiorm this season maxed out at 80 res, but with Bramon's low attack res, you know, they come 70, and then if there's no Caden or Mila support, so that's like 61. Something along those lines. So much less res than 80. And when Bramon can get 80, 90 attack and a special pre-charged or something via infantry pulse, that's going to dent into Fuon quite a bit. But fortunately, we've got lots of defense tiles this week, so we could use those, which definitely helped a lot in some matchups. But yeah, there's uh, not much we can do here against uh, Cecilia, because if you notice, all of our ranged units are Carlos or Blue, so Cecilia is just a fantastic pick against them. Of course, you have to be concerned about Lino spam. Like, if you tried tanking both Bramons and Calm at the same time, probably not a great idea. If you do it one by one, much easier. Well, Uller can't even one-shot Sylvia, so she has to overkill with Deadeye. HP inflation out of 10. Cecilia actually unable to take out Mills, but it doesn't matter because... He's the last guy left. And it's not like we're gonna actually be able to do anything here. The near save pre effective is just gonna clean up. But yeah. Uh, the other thing this week that was interesting was Gatekeeper. Because I know people have been using Gatekeeper lately to make maps with more like quote unquote choke points. And the thing with those kind of like choke point maps is it made it even harder for Fiorm. Uh, we only we didn't encounter any of them specifically this season, but the ones I've seen uh, from other people. Oh wait, structure levels. But from what I've seen from other people, yeah, there's uh, some nasty shenanigans that can happen because of Gatekeeper. I, 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 I'm aware that detail report's super strong, especially notes like Ether Raids, but I just do not have much of a use for Gatekeeper beyond memes and something for Ether Raids defense, which we're just goofballing on defense, so uh, we don't really care too much there. So Lin's just going to attack Krom because clearly attacking Selif is not a good idea. And thanks to Duo P and company, he's able to get enough attack to pick up that kind of kill. Of course, Krom, his defense is considerably higher than his res, but it's still not that high. His HP is not that high, so it's very feasible for Duo Lin to pick up the two shot with Moonbo. Looks like they just decide to attack with Duo Lin, which is totally fine because they have isolation. Which means no one's going to be able to reach any of their units, and it's just going to be easy cleanup, especially with the existence of Niffle. They can just inflict a no counterattack status, and Solo can't do anything. And of course, Sylvia is never going to do anything relevant. So, yeah. Don't know how I'm going to deal with Niffle in the future. The number one problem with Niffle right now is the bonus stats. The plus 10 HP is just ridiculously hard to deal with. Especially uh, with the 30% damage reduction. Uh, from Domain of Ice on the uh, first attack. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, she's just super fast, so... That's always a problem. Not being able to double means Domain of Ice becomes that much stronger. And speaking of Domain of Ice, we have... Domain of Ice here with, uh... 
Brave Edelgard and Brave Hector seem solid. I feel like... I know a lot of people nowadays for near save, they tend to recommend Brave Edelgard. I would tend to agree except for the part where she misses lots of kills. <laughs> uh, which, if you have a competent enough team, it doesn't matter. But I think the main problem with near save Brave Edelgard is typically she's just not going to really do too much. <laughs> Against especially teams like mine where you just spam ranked units, the far save unit has to carry so much more. And if the far save unit can't carry, typically when people are running near save Brave Edelgard, they're running like sturdy stance uh, 3 or something for guard. This particular one isn't, but um, it probably means you're not running distant counter or whatnot. So they can get sniped down and things can go downhill real fast, but of course that's assuming the far save unit actually dies. But that's why we spam out specials like Luna, because it doesn't matter if they have tons of bulk. And if we can still do some amount of damage, Luna is going to generate a lot. A lot of bonus damage. And let's just say, you know, you're a unit with, I don't know, 70 attack, and the enemy unit has, you know, 70 res. Or defense, doesn't matter. So they're taking base zero. Luna gives them plus 35. Which is uh, quite a bit, considering they started out with zero. But uh, unfortunately for them, they didn't quite place Brave Edelgard in the correct location to protect all their units from, from melee units, like not here. So that's a Ripperonis. Well, if that, that's probably this week's replays, we might get one more from like a rematch or something. But overall, solid on defense this week. Only that one minus 51 because of timing. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how things turned out. I wasn't expecting to stay because I knew very well using Fiorm. And only Fiorm as my carry this week is not going to be viable. If I use both Fiorm and my, or my Fiorm and Nino teams, like I brought two teams instead of my usual one on offense, still probably wouldn't have made it because there's too many matches where we're just outmatched. It's just not the right strategy to hit end turn when you have units like Legendary Claude and you don't have an Archer or any way to deal with the damage reduction, so... In the meantime, we got ourselves probably just top 10k at the very least. I don't think we make top 6k. I guess it's possible, but speaking of possible, we're not even trying in arena. Uh, ideally, for season bouncing shenanigans, we want to stay in tier 21. One for one of the upcoming two seasons because it's a three week rotation with these bonus units but unfortunately there's no real good options for us don't really want to build uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name Petrin, Petrine, something <laughs> uh, oh, we're, so we're just using Alphonse the problem with this week is that it's Earth Season and Legendary Tiki bonus. We don't even have Legendary Tiki, so that's fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, we only, our only option is Alphonse. And haven't done Arena Assault yet, so we gotta go do that. Probably won't be too difficult since it's Water and Earth this week. But, yeah, we'll be back if there's any more replays. But otherwise, when the results drop in.
All right, let's see what we got here. Looks like we ended up getting top 6k, interesting. <laughs> I don't actually remember the cutoff for top 6k generally, so it's kind of whatever. We ended up getting that minus 51. I kind of forgot that we didn't have the lift loss protection for the rest of the season, so uh, kind of a small oversight there, but I think this season, uh, I think we'll use Legendary Julia again because it is Earth season. As for on defense, we're gonna kick out Elowid, and I did bless uh, Brave Erica, so she can join Elowid in doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> So she might be able to do some stuff if she gets to attack, but that's kind of the trademark if she gets to attack, so Lif as bonus, don't think that'll change too much. Shamir just not really gonna do anything like usual. She's probably just deterring people from using some particular strategies, but that's not really doing much for us. So in the meantime, I feel like in Arena, we're probably not going to be able to stay on the third week, so we're going to go back up to 21 after this upcoming season, and I don't think we're going to be able to stay, so hopefully the next bonus units are not favorable for us, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about losing out value there. But yeah, Arena Assault, we got like 5,346 or somewhere around there, so pretty standard scores for that kind of season. Uh, yeah, forging bones, stuff, hall of forms going on. Nothing too special. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.